Yo, it's the finale of the How to Beat the SAT series. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. This is part four of four, and it's also the last part of the math section where I'm going to be going through the last three main categories of the SAT math. If you haven't checked out the first three parts of the series, I highly recommend you do so. I'm going to leave those linked right up here to so make sure you check those out when you get time. Those are a good precursor to this last part of the series. And if you watch all of them in a row all the way through, you'll definitely be able to beat this test because the best way to beat it is to know what they're going to ask before they ask it. So if that sounds like something you're interested in stay tuned watch the whole series let's get right into this last part of how to beat the sat also by the way just a heads up i'm gonna be going through these questions pretty fast so make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question before i answer it because i'm gonna be going right into the explanation so pause the video try to figure it out yourself and then unpause it and also for each question i'm gonna be giving you a tip so make sure you watch all the way through so you don't miss any of those but without further ado let's get started with the last part of the sat math so the third main category of the sat math is geometry and trigonometry in this question here they're asking about the quadratic equation and my tip for these a lot of these geometry and trig questions can be done straight on desmos so here if we graph this equation on desmos this is the graph we get just looking at the vertex our x coordinate of the vertex is seven so here where they're asking for what value of x does the value of y reach its minimum that minimum point is the bottom vertex and that value of x is seven so your answer here is seven this next problem is pretty simple it's the pythagorean theorem if you don't know what that is it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared and it's always applied to right triangles so that means you have to see that little box in the corner that means it's a right angle 90 degrees and when you see that in a triangle you can use the pythagorean theorem to determine the length of the sides so here it's saying that a is four and b is five and it's asking what is c so C is what we like to call the hypotenuse. It's the longest side of the triangle. And if we know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, if we want to isolate C, we get that C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. So here, A squared is four squared, B squared is five squared. The square root of those is answer choice D. So our correct answer here is answer choice D. Now this question here is asking about similar polygons. So this is where you have two of the same type of shape, just different sizes. So here I definitely recommend you take a piece of paper and you draw them out, label all the vertices and the sides, because that makes it a lot more easier to visualize. My tip is to draw them out and set up a proportion based on their similarity. So they're saying that the side AB is 170 and the side BC is 850. Also YZ is 60 and they're asking what XY is. So here we could set up a proportion 850 over 170 equals 60 over X. Here, just do some simple division. 850 divided by 170 is five. 60 divided by what equals five? That answer is 12. So here the answer is D, 12. The next category, our fourth category for the SAT math is stats and probability. And I'm not gonna lie, this is the one that I struggled with the most because I did not take a stats class until junior year of high school. And this stats section genuinely made no sense to me. And if you're in that boat where you just don't understand something when you're trying to study, I highly recommend you check out today's sponsor, Educo. Educo is an ACT and SAT tutoring service that's run by experts whose sole mission is to make quality education accessible. And they honestly have some of the best ways to prepare for these standardized tests, other than watching this video, of course. You know, like exclusive full length practice exams and targeted questions that some students have even reported to have seen on the test the next time they took it. So they definitely know what they're doing with these questions. They also make sure to personalize each tutoring session to the student's needs to match their learning style and their strengths. So they know what works for you and they're gonna use that to your advantage to make you a better test taker. They also use a hands-on structured learning approach that fixes not just your content weaknesses, but how to pace the test, how to use technology to your advantage, and how to build an organized study plan that works for you. And best yet, they offer the first real score guarantee unlike these other companies that say score guarantee but once you read the fine print it's just some marketing gimmick they actually offer a score guarantee which gives measurable commitment to help students achieve tangible progress and the reason they offer this is because their system works so if you're ready to knock this test out of the park and get the best hands-on tutoring make sure you check out educo with the link in the description and sign up for a free 60 minute consultation and use promo code oxhaj15 that's A-K-S-H-A-J 15 for 15% 15 off any tutoring package. I really don't see a better deal than this. And remember, if you don't get the results you want, you don't pay. Sounds like a sweet deal to me. And let's get back to the video. So for this question, they're talking about ratios, proportions, and percentages. And honestly, for these, you just don't get freaked out by the fractions and just don't overthink the question. Here it's saying 29 out of 100. 
So your answer is literally 29 out of 100, which is C. This question is also very common. It's a data interpretation question. And here my tip is to actually understand what they're asking. Here they're asking how much greater was the average number of store employees in the warehouse stores than in supermarkets. So look at warehouse, look at supermarket, 365 minus 130 is 235. So your answer is C. Next type of question are scatter plots and lines of best fit. And my tip for these ones is that positive slopes go up, left or right, and vice versa for negative slopes. So here it's asking, which of the following is closest to the slope of this line of best fit? So here we can already cross out C and D because those are positive. This line is going down. If you don't know slope dude, it's a good YouTube video. I recommend checking it out. If he's skiing down the slope, it's nice and negative. And if he's going up, he has to puff, puff his chest, puff, puff, positive goes up. Check out the video. I'm not crazy, but here you're going to find two points and approximate the slope. So here literally just look at the first point, which is zero comma 14 and then two comma 12. If you look at that, it goes down one box. So the slope is about one. So here their answer is B because it's negative and it's about one. So negative 1.1, that's the closest you're gonna get. So it's negative 1.1. And the last category of the SAT math, the fifth category is applied math. This question is asking about rate problems. So it's speed and density, for example, this one's about speed and it's asking which equation represents the situation. And my tip for these is to pay attention to what the variables represent. So we have three miles per hour of walking and then running five miles per hour. W hours of walking are hours of running and the total is 14. So we always wanna have the total after the equal sign. So we can cross out C and D it's because those don't equal 14. Then we're gonna see the answer is A here because three miles per hour walking, three W plus five miles per hour of running, five R equals 14. So literally just what the problem is saying, translate it into algebra. This next question is asking about the population increase of Greenville. And here it increases by 7%. And if you know 7% in decimal form is 0 0.07. So the tip is to look for percent multipliers. So since it's an increase, we can't just multiply it by 0 0.07. That means it's decreasing by 93%. So we wanna add one because one is 100%, it means baseline stays the same. So if we multiply it by 1.07, that means it's increasing from its baseline of one, 0 0.7 more. So that means 1.07 times increase. So that means K is 1.07, so the answer is C. And our last type of problem is real world linear modeling. These type of problems, my best tip is just to set up an inequality. Here the inequality would be 86 plus X is greater than or equal to 100. So the remaining hours they need minimum is 14 because 100 minus 86 is 14. X is greater than or equal to 14, which means they need 14 or more hours. So the minimum is 14. Therefore the answer is A. All right, so you made it to the end of the series. All four parts, hopefully you watched them all the way through. If you didn't, please consider checking them out. If you watch all of them all the way through, you're guaranteed to up your score. So make sure you check those out. And I also just want to say that 95% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. So if this provided you value in any way, please consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and it helps out the channel a ton more than you know. So please consider subscribing and liking the video. But yeah, that's a wrap on this series. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you come back to this every time you need to study for the SAT. Just refresh your brain on these topics. And you know what I love to say, if you know what they're going to ask before they ask it, the test is going to be really predictable and easy. I hope this helps you. Make sure you tell other people about it who are struggling with the SAT. I'm sure this would help them. And yeah, thanks for sticking with me through this series. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.